Today's topic, a brand new game still in shrink. Put it on the pile with the rest of them. Welcome to another episode of Table Scraps, in which we present a topic related to tabletop gaming and then have a brief conversation about it with the live audience. Let's not waste any more time listening to this weird intro music. Let's get right into today's discussion. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of our month-long experimental daily series, Table Scraps, in which we present a topic about tabletop gaming that's been suggested to us by a viewer, and then we discuss it along with the YouTube chat who's joining us during the live stream. So thank you for joining us, and today's suggested topic comes to us from viewer Eddie Moon, who says to us in his question, how many games are on your shelf of shame? Games that have never been played or even opened. And how do you plan on making that number smaller? Well, I certainly love a challenge, which is not true. I, I love everything to be as easy as possible for me. But you have presented me with a challenge that I will tackle head on and truthfully and as honestly as possible in this episode. In my studio here, uh, I have my recording area behind me, and on the opposite wall, I have my game shelf. So as I sit here each episode, I get to look at these shelves and look at all the games I've played and haven't played. A couple of years ago, the beginning of the year, I set a challenge for myself. I actually made a couple of, of videos about the unplayed games in my collection. And at any one time, to be honest, I would say almost 60% of my collection was unplayed. And that's what spurred me to create the video, was to kind of throw down the gauntlet for myself to, to play a lot of these games. Since that time, of course, more games have come into my collection. And even with more games coming in, I, I have worked to try and winnow down the number of unplayed games. And I think... To be honest, I'm at about 25 to 30%. So one out of every four, one out of every three, either hasn't been played or hasn't been played to the point where I feel satisfactory with saying, you know, I, yeah, I've played that game. I'm familiar with it. I, I could teach it and, and, and so on and so forth. So the number is getting smaller, but it does, still does hover around that amount. So uh, I'm curious, uh, streaming chat, how this percentage... Um, compares. Now, actually, there's another part of this, too. You know, 25%. Now, if I had four games and only one of them was unplayed, that wouldn't be that bad. Let's say there are 240 games and a fourth of them are unplayed. That would be 60 games on this shelf that are unplayed. One thing that I have done to answer the other part of your question, how do you plan on making that number smaller? Well, one of the answers is obviously play more games, which of course, but, you know, is not as easily said as done with some of the things that can come up with life. And when you do get a chance to sit down and play a game, sometimes people want to play other games, which is fair. One thing I've done, though, is I have instituted a kind of one in one out policy. If the game if there's not room on my shelf for the games, I'm not going to keep them. Uh, I, my collection, I've been collecting since now 2012, so it's been almost five years since I've gotten back into the hobby to the point where I've been starting to accumulate a library of games. You know, at first I was ravis, ravenously just buying every game I could get. Oh, I don't have a worker placement game. Oh, I don't have a social deduction game. Oh, I don't have a game like this. Oh, that one's just pretty. And I was just accumulating every game I could to create a library because it was all new. But I've hit the point, I guess, of maturity as a person who's involved in the hobby where the honeymoon period has ended. And now I'm trying to be a lot more discerning, uh, not, not just grabbing every game that looks neat, but figuring out, is there a gap in my collection for this? And, you know, and does this game either bring something new that I don't have in my collection yet, or could this game replace an existing one? Now, to be fair, every week or so, I do find myself reorganizing my shelves to try and make space to cram just, just one more game into the shelf. If I move these over and squish this one in, if I take this out of the box and put it in a Ziploc bag, I could slide the Ziploc bag in there. So I do find myself trying to cheat at my own rule as much as possible. Rearranging or putting them on the top of the shelf or on the chair next to the shelf. Um, so yeah, I'm not very good at it yet. But 
that is what my history with it has been and, and what I've been trying to do going forward. But that's just one person's perspective. And what I have found is when it comes to this, everyone varies greatly. So let's turn to the chat and let's see how everyone else approaches this. Our first chat message is going to be from David, who says, I think that part of the board gaming hobby seems to be being a collector of games as much as being a player of games. That and having acquisition disorder also causes a backlog to be high, which <laughs> may be very, very, very true. Yeah, I, I agree completely, David. I and I, I know that uh, you are not alone in that perception. Um, I know that uh, Jamie Keggy, the host of the Secret Cabal gaming podcast, I've heard him mention, I believe he has his game collection um, like in his basement along one wall. And he'll say that sometimes he'll go down to his basement and just admire his game shelf because it makes him happy just to look at all of these games and think about the games and the components and the you know, times he's had playing. So I think that collector mentality is a, a very real, very legitimate thing for as part of this hobby. So I don't think that is something to be ashamed of, obviously, um, I, but I do think it is a real, real part of it. Okay, here's some stats from Aaron. I have about 10 games. Mine are all opened, punched out, sorted, ready to go, and gathering dust. <laughs> um, that actually surprises me um, because I, as someone with a larger collection for various reasons, I could understand, uh, you know, mind collecting dust and I can uh, rationalize it. Oh, I have so many games. Of course, they're all going to get played. So it interests me to hear that with about 10 games, you still suffer from the same problem that I do, which is, is encouraging. And uh, just means that um, if we're ever at a convention together, we definitely need to get a couple of these games played to knock them off our own lists. Uh, let's continue on to Toyota Wolf, who says... I have about 13% games in shrink wrap and about 30% unplayed in a collection of 220 games and 300 expansions. I am also doing the 10 by 10 challenge to get more games played and a 10 by five challenge with my wife. For anyone who doesn't know, I believe the 10 by 10 challenge is to choose 10 games in your collection and play them 10 times within a year. I'm also very surprised to see Toyota, you and I sound like we have a very similar sized game collection and a very similar percentage of unplayed games. So that's actually uh, very interesting to hear. I wonder if that's an anomaly or if that's kind of a correlation that would continue um, as we get a larger data sample. So let, let's find out. Gil mentions, I have about 160 games, but I'm still a immature, you know, new to the hobby gamer, but I just can't help myself. How to know when it's time to stop? Is there any? How do you not get drawn into the pretty things on Kickstarter? Oh, Gil, that is bringing back so many memories. And I think that, uh, that, that those were questions that I actually struggled with myself. You know, uh, I remember watching the Dice Tower, right when Tom got about to the point where he started having his one in, one out policy and would say, you know, I'm not adding more, any more games to my collection. This is the size it's gonna be. And at that point, I was still new enough in the hobby. I was like, what? How could you even say that? How would you not want to accumulate more games and bring them in? And over the next couple of years or so, I have slowly kind of come to that point as well. And so, Gil, I think that change in attitude is something that as you continue to be in the hobby and continue to be a, you know someone who's managing a board game collection, I think it will come naturally after a while. It's not something that needs to be forced or even I think should be forced. Some people never hit that point, but that's what they want. And if that's you know, the kind of collection they want, that's absolutely fine. But if you are concerned about it, I wouldn't be, because again, I think it will just be a natural progression as your time in the hobby increases. As time goes by, let me know if and how that changes for you. Sam joins us to say, the shelf of shame concept is in opposition to our desire to play games deeply. New games need to prove their way into the library, which means we choose to keep games unplayed until their time. Oh, that is poignant. And I, I'm really glad that you shared that comment, Sam, because I, I like that, I agree. I, that actually makes me feel less apprehensive about my unplayed games in my collection because that's the first comment that I've really seen that takes the opposite tactic to this problem. Usually it's shelf of shame. Oh, I got to get these games played. Oh man, I'm so bad for having unplayed games in my collection. I'm wasting money. Oh, it's embarrassing. But to say, no, these games are more like a fine wine. You need to find the right place, the right time. And 
instead of barreling through them, enjoy them. If you have a game you're playing that you really enjoy, keep playing it. Don't worry about the other games that aren't played yet. That attitude is a little bit refreshing because it's a different than the norm that I've heard, and I really appreciate it. And you just added a new wrinkle to my brain, a new thought that I'm going to keep in the back of my mind as I go through and look at my shelf of shame and approach it with this new attitude. So thank you, Sam. Kabuki Kid mentions, my biggest shelf of shame issue is usually play length. The big, epic, long games are the ones that take ages to get played. There's also a few of them that I'm just, okay, I'm lazy and I'm not reading the rules for them yet. I didn't quite read your question the way it was written, but hopefully I got the idea across. Yes, that, that has been my experience as well. Uh, when I do have a game day opportunity to, you know, sit down and have like six to eight hours, you know, really big day to play uh, some games, usually several smaller games that haven't been played will hit the table instead of one big one. So even when you have the time and the opportunity and the mood to get these games off your shelf of shame, usually those long, big, epic ones still remain in the queue waiting to get played. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a conundrum. That's definitely what it is. As long as I understand the correct meaning of, of conundrum. Trevin mentions, for the when do I stop problem, Apply the same concepts of addiction. Is this affecting other aspects of your life outside itself? Does it affect your family, your job, or your wallet? Actually, Trevin, that's, um, that's a really good point. And um, to actually um, take a moment to approach it seriously, I, I think that is something that some people do have to deal with. I know it's one of the things that I always have in the back of my mind when I look at my own game collection and you know don't want to just be obtaining games just to accumulate. I try to keep the perspective of having a monthly budget. And of course, you know, this is not saying this is how it has to be. This is not advice that this is what you should do. This is just what my wife and I do personally. Um, we set a monthly entertainment budget and, you know, she gets half, I get half. And we're allowed to, as long as all the bills are paid and everything else is taken care of, we're allowed to spend our entertainment budget on whatever we want. You know, sometimes we go to the movies, sometimes we go on a trip, sometimes we do other stuff. And I have been for several years spending my entertainment budget on, you know, board games. Well, and so for us, that's what works. As long as we have a budget established and we stay within that budget, it helps to relieve some of the anxiety or guilt that can come across with obtaining more games each each month or two. And so that might be an approach that if someone is struggling with it, I don't know if it helps, but that has what has helped uh, my family. So anyway, I hope that that and all of the other comments that we have brushed on today have been helpful in kind of uh, giving a new perspective. I know I have gained a new perspective on, on some aspects of the shelf of shame and it wouldn't have happened without the chat being around. So. If you have additional comments or suggestions or ideas related to this, feel free to post them in the YouTube comments below or over on our Facebook or Twitter pages. Continue the conversation there and we'll see where this leads off and maybe even do another episode on it. Before we go, I want to mention that this episode has been made possible by our supporters on our Pod Pledge crowdfunding page. Thank you everyone who's been supporting the show there. That's what's making this episode that you're watching right now possible. Until the next episode that is possible to watch, I've been Chaz Marler, who, along with the YouTube chat, have been serving up some table scraps. Thanks. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, and then we'll have the intro music. If it is, say it is, um, oh no, math, not math, because I'd like to know. I'd also like to pronounce it correctly.